Welcome. You're officially enrolled in Motionlet's dance class. Let's now discuss motor learning in dance. Motor learning is a significant part of every individual's life. It is present in every level of our experiences. Motor learning means that dancers should have knowledge in skilled tasks both basic and complex. These skills are not accomplishing through motor development such as walking, skipping and grasping objects. This may also include balances that are not part of our everyday movement. The goal of the dance teachers is to teach this skill to the dancers so they can execute it in a smooth, expressive, accurate and will be retained on their memory. The objective for this is to achieve dexterity level that enhances movement quality. Various theories have merged with regards to the history of motor learning and it was classified into two general classifications. This were categorized and related to the two major types of motor control namely centrally controlled and environmentally driven mechanisms. Several theories are focused in stages of learning. Motor learning theories include descriptions of various forms of learning and whether learners are consciously aware of their procedures in the learning experience are learned through repetition without any awareness. Eventually, researchers focused on differences between administrative learning. Schmidt contends that when a movement is made, these four elements are stored. 1. Conditions at the start of the movement such as weight or position of the body. 2. Parameters that can be varied such as force, tempo, and velocity. 3. Sensory consequences such as how the movement felt and appeared. 4. Knowledge of results, the outcome. The mentioned four elements are eventually engrossed in a schema in two sections, and the motor programs contain both. Recall schema is the first section that is used to represent the motion portion, in which it provides actual outcomes or desired responses. Every time movements were made, the recall schema creates a relationship between specific parameters and provides actual outcomes. The second section is the recognition schema. It is used to represent the sensory portion and assess the result and update the motor program to fix the error. The second section contains sensory consequences and previous results of the movements. In conclusion, the more variations had been present in practice, the stronger the schema is once the movement had been made. This theory shows that learning is reliant on continuously updating the recognition schema by putting the outcomes of new attempts that can be understood through knowledge of outcomes. Additionally, recall and recognition schemas, the generalized motor program, GMP, is the central idea of Schmidt's theory. A generalized motor program, GMP, is a program that authorizes the motor system to perform a major class of analogous movements or actions. This is stored in our memory and needed random parameters to be added in the next execution. It allows the motor system to accept a variety of motor programs. Parameters contain the speed, force, and body parts that rely on one execution of GMP to another. Invariant features are called the signature of GMP. These are the features that do not switch from one activity to another within the same class. The GMP theory focused on the ballistic and fast movements, in which the absence of time limits the ability to use feedback. Ecological theory In the late 1970s, new theories regarding motor learning started to appear. These theories were a product of all ideas from the ecological perspective or ecological theory. This approach highlighted the relationship between the environment and the visual task. Movements need knowledge from the environment, perceptual information, that is focused on ton desired motor movement. A well-known ecological motor theorist, Carl Newell draws most of these theories from the scheme of both dynamic systems theory and ecological perspective. Dynamic systems theory assesses the body as the mechanical system and sees behavior as emerging from the relationship between the nervous system and the environment. This approach emerges with the interaction with their partners. On the other hand, the starters seem to have conflict more with the steps and need to focus and concentrate mostly on executing the dance form. Fitz and Posner's three-stage model in 1967, psychologists and researchers Paul Fitz and Michael Posner established a model for learning stages that are still used today. The cognitive stage, the associative stage, and the autonomous stage, according to their idea, are the stages in which a skill is learned. The simplicity and practicality of this idea are among the numerous reasons why coaches and dance teachers find it appealing to use in training. Defining the stage, the learner learns to know the nature of the task, develops new strategies for accomplishing the task, and determines how to best evaluate which strategy to employ during the first step, the cognitive stage. This stage demands a lot of focus, and the learner tries out a variety of tactics. In addition, the student pays attention to detailed feedback and seeks out teacher support. Performance is inconsistent, with numerous faults, and improvements are significant. 
Learners at this stage are generally aware when something is wrong, but they are unsure how to fix it. They begin to develop the ability to evaluate their abilities and the selective attention required for the many components of the work. The skills are developed during the second stage, the associative stage, which means that the dimensional and material components of the skill become more organized. From one trial to the next, the movement is less variable, and so improvement is slower. When a pupil enters this stage, no set quantity of practice or level of growth is required. The verbal and cognitive aspects are not so much as important in this second stage, the reason is that students need to learn to identify the specific environmental conditions with what is needed. Errors are not that frequent and less extreme, the student is starting to learn how to identify the exact errors without the help of the teachers. A load of feedback starts to change from visual to proprioceptive. The main goal of this stage is to enhance the motor pattern organization. The third and final stage doesn't require attention at all, it only happens after enough practice and experience with the task. An individual can do the activity or task and do other tasks simultaneously as action is very automatic or habitual. In this stage, putting too much recognition on components of the skill can reduce performance. In this stage, variability is less. In other terms, recurrent executions can produce effective performance. Practicing tasks in different environments and conditions is critical. In the autonomous stage, students can identify and fix their errors. Fitz and Posner were confident that it's not viable for all to achieve the autonomous stage on a given activity. Elements that assess whether or not this stage can be reached include the quality of instruction, the quality, and the amount of practice. The main goal of this stage is to build a high level of skill and perform with consistency on the said level. Gentile's two-stage model Antoinette Gentile, a psychology professor, implements a two-stage model of motor learning that focuses on the goal of the learners. The two stages are namely the initial stage and the later stages. Closed skills are abilities that are done absolutely the same way each time. With repetitive process the skill gets to be more steady and productive, which is known as fixation. Dancers put numerous hours over a few months practicing the same expertise within the indistinguishable design in a range to improve reliable execution. Open skills are skills that requires to be executed in many variety of gestures, timing, and spacing such as leaps. This involves conditions that are changing mostly, like a use of space and broad range of tempos. Diversification is the ability to enhance the skill to various conditions and criteria and to adjust quickly. Changes across learning stages. Both Gentiles and Fitz and Posner's model of motor learning has a similarity when it comes to learners showing certain characteristics as they went through different stages. These characteristics include following changes, improvement rate. When learners develop to be more advanced, the rate of improvement lessen. Major improvements happen in early stages. This interaction is called power law or practice. Even though improvements spread quickly it is breakable and can be easily lost. However, learning is slowest in the late stages, but it is powerful and likely to support over time. Coordination. Performers must solve the degrees of freedom problem in the early stages of learning. Degrees of freedom problem is a prevention of issue for the motor system to identify how to restrict the degree level of freedom to attain a task. Adjustments to familiar movement patterns or habits. Trying a skill that represents a skill that is well known they show bias actions then they know how to adopt new strategies. Muscle selection during a skill. Extra muscles are used than are needed on the primary level of learning in which timing of activation is mostly not correct. Thereafter, count of muscles that had been used is decreasing. Use of energy, movement economy. On primary level, dancers attain a moderate level of energy and in the secondary level of learning, economy of actions is the goal. Attention to meaningful visual cues. From early level of learning up until learning expanded. Dancers had been developing to be more effective visually on what is required in order to finish task. Demands on conscious attention. Starter requires to consider all aspect of the new skill but the professional learners can focus on the task until it became natural. Ability to detect and correct errors. In the primary level of learning, even though starters were aware when they had made an error, they didn't know how to correct it but in the next stages they need to know and correct this. Activity in the brain. Part of the brains were considered different in terms of being active in the primary up to last stages of learning. Nevertheless, 
The theories carry the idea that all learners should overcome various levels to proceed from starter to skilled mover. Forms of motor learning. Apart from theories and levels of motor learning, various types of learning influence dancers. Overall, types of motor learning can be categorized into declarative and non-declarative learning. Non-declarative learning. Non-declarative learning also called implicit learning means learning with less effort and achieved with just repeated exposure. Kids always learn dance skills such as jumping and turning by copying their teacher's movements without knowing that they already absorbed them. Non-declarative learning can be categorized into associative, non-associative, and procedural learning. Non-associative learning. This usually happens when one stimulus was given repeatedly and the nervous system adapts to it. The two main types of non-associative learning are habituation and sensitization. Habituation happens when repeated exposure to a non-painful stimulus starts to decrease receptiveness. Sensitization happens when repetitive exposure to an identified threatening stimulus starts to increase receptiveness. Associative learning. This usually happens when two ideas or stimuli are together. An example of this is when movement and music become connected as one. Occasionally, associative learning can produce cause and effect scenarios. Two known types of associative learning are classical and operant conditioning. Classical conditioning helps an individual to know the bond between two stimuli in the environment. Operant conditioning is voluntary in a trial and error learning. Somehow an individual knows to give a certain response among others with a corresponding consequence. This type of learning follows the law of effect. This law states that recognized behaviors are selected for the sake of other behaviors. Procedural learning. Procedural learning is known as obtaining a movement skill by repeating it over and over again without no conscious attention. Progress of learning is slow through continuous repetition and expressed through Polish performance. Declarative learning. Declarative learning is also known as explicit learning which the outcome in knowledge that can be recalled consciously. It attains attention and reflection. Supposed to be this is not actually a form of motor learning but might help in learning motor skills such as learning the name of steps or skills in dance class. McCarthy and Kolb. Combining two theories. Bernice McCarthy, an educator, an author explains the four learning styles in her educational system, which is named 4MAT. Dynamic. Experimentation and trial and error. Risk takers. Intuitive. Innovative. Social interactions and discussion. Cooperative. Common sense. Hands-on and practical, more cautious analytic. Logical, seek facts in systematic ways Another educational theorist, David Kolb concentrates working on experiential learning. He explains the cycle of learning which includes the following. Concrete experience, reflective observation, abstract conceptualizing based on observing and reflecting, testing the new ideas through experimentation. Deborah Rose and Roberta Cristina both authors had emerged these two theories into a single model for learning purposes. These emerged models set learners by both personal style and activity preferences. This explains that a certain dancer can learn better through experimentation, dynamic, with precise movement. Another dancer may be logical, analytic descriptions, analytic, and respond to what is observed in the demonstration. A well-known thread through all types of theories and systems of learning is that each learner is unique and has varying strategies and preferences in the learning journey. If instructors can use one teaching method, such as demonstration they will only achieve a part of the class. Teachers can decorate lessons to incorporate different learning forms and taught each student. Training dancers to execute a dance task. Performers can develop a deeper knowledge of the theories, stages, and forms of learning by investigating the process of learning. If you want to know this skill, you can check on Adam's closed loop theory. Mostly repeated attempts of this task in a non-locomotor situation would be a good starting point. For starters, it's acceptable to modify the task, perhaps it's more relevant to try the task without help and continuously repeat the task until it's finished according to Adam's theory. As for Schmidt's theory, it is said that it's more relevant to provide multiple versions of a one-legged balance to create the schema of the skill. Examples are when the gesture leg is in parallel as we is externally rotated and the arm's position are differing in multiple ways. When the performer learns the schema, the right posture will be developing in different types of positions and not just the first one that is learned. Movement and a wide range of position requests that instructors and choreographers make on dancers, it is helpful for dancers to know the schema for basic types of balances and movements. Newell's ecological theory highlighted active problem solving, students should be persuaded to seek and discover various solutions to problems with the task. 
Let students know that they should let and try different solutions than instructing them on what to do is an effective learning tool. Most of the time students want a direct answer. Asking explainable questions is a good technique for them because it helps in developing internal error detection and correction mechanisms. Fitz and Posner's three stages of learning model is an effective guide for students and instructors when they want to learn in advance. If a student is in the cognitive stage, this particular student is discovering various strategies with a high rate of success. At some point, students can gain knowledge from the teacher's feedback and guidance. When a student is using the technique during the associative stage, many challenges can be seen in the task. After the balance mechanisms became automatic, the student can now reach the balance while the attention is focused on other criteria. If the balance worsens when another balance had been added the result will be a student may not have achieved the autonomous level and requit or continue the practice. Analogous to Gentile's two-stage model, it is essential, to begin with, the goals for the early stage and be attentive to teaching the unity of movement. Performers need to know the basic pattern of shaping the gesture leg alternately using arms positions. Although the different parts can be practiced by one at the beginning, the participation of all the components must be relatively early in the process. Musicality is necessary for dance. Operant conditioning can be used by complementing the dancers when they do a good balance is one way to use this form of learning. On the other hand, it is efficient to look at an intrinsic positive association like making performers aware of their goals that can be reached if the balance is perfected. Above all of these processes, dancers and teachers should address the broad variations of learning techniques using demonstration, analytic description, exploration, de-social interaction to know several techniques.